In the last video, I showed that I successfully formatted an 8-inch floppy disk and wrote a program called rwdj.com which could read and write to any sector on any track of the floppy disk. And these programs were running on the IMSI 8080 computer. I used these programs to install CPM on this floppy. If I insert the floppy into drive A, and have a look at the disk jockey disk controller board, this board here. It has an EEPROM that starts at address F800. This is the 50 pin ribbon cable that connects to the dual disk drive system. I set the address switches on the inside computer to the start address of the EEPROM F800. And if I start the program executing, the disk drive is accessed and we're greeted with a CPM prompt and a drive A prompt from which we can type in commands. Now how did I get CPM on that floppy? This is a very long story. I'll start by explaining the memory map of a CPM system. This is the map for a 48K CPM system. Address 0000 is the start of RAM in the computer. And for an 8-bit computer, it ends at FFFF, 65,536. A 48K CPM system starts at address A400. This is where the CCP, or Command Control Program, resides. That's part of CPM. Another part of CPM is called the Basic Disk Operating System, BDOS, which starts at AC00. The CCP plus the BDOS occupies 44 sectors on disk. So that's track 0, sectors 2 to 26, and track 1, sectors 1 to 19. As you recall, track 0, sector 1, is the cold bootloader, which I'll explain shortly. Also required to run CPM is a BIOS, or C BIOS for custom BIOS, which starts at BA00 and ends at approximately BCFF. There's some extra space for working RAM for disk drive directory manipulation. So, really, the CPM system ends at address BFFF, which is precisely 48K. There are CPM commands called sysgen and move CPM, which allow you to relocate the CPM to different memory addresses, either higher or lower in memory. The C BIOS comes from track 1, sectors 20 to 25. This has to be custom written for every installation of CPM. The CCP and the BDOS for version 2.2, for example, are independent of the computer system. But the BIOS determines which keyboard, terminal, serial ports, disk drive controllers you're using and how to interface the logical realm to the physical realm. That is the purpose of the BIOS. When I start executing the inside computer at F800, the disk jockey board EEPROM reads track 0, sector 1, 128 bytes, and puts it at FF00 to FFFF. This is the cold bootloader. It then executes this cold bootloader code. This code then goes to track 0, sectors 2 to 26, and track 1, sectors 1 to 19, and track 1, sectors 20 to 25, and loads in the CPM program from disk, CCP, BDOS, and CBIOS. And it then executes CPM, and that is the result on the screen. 48K CPM version 2.2, sign-on message, 
and then the drive A ready prompt. Where did I get the CPM from? Well, on the internet, there's a website called Dave Dunfield's Old Computer Archives, and he has archived various floppy disk systems and created image disk files for them. Unfortunately, most of them are for double density disks or five and a quarter inch disks. To find a single density eight inch disk was very difficult, but there was one for a Chromemco eight inch single density system. Unfortunately, there was a problem with that image disk file in that he archived a defective floppy disk because I could see that in the data of that disk the CPM directory for the files section was corrupt which means I could only use the CPM system tracks and I left the directory tracks empty and then I created my own directory from scratch a new one and then I had to import files such as pip.com, ed.com I'm still looking for sysgen.com so I have to manually put in the uh, default uh, external system files and then I had to write a custom BIOS for my environment I started with the Kramemco C BIOS and started to modify it and so forth but this system is for a 4FDC 16FDC disk controller card which I do not have. I have a disk jockey card. So then I had to patch in I use that as a skeleton BIOS and then I patched in the disk jockey C BIOS but I had to relocate the code because this was for a different size of CPM system. I had to readjust the, all the addresses here so they would start at BA00 which represents a 48K CPM system. And this again was modified to suit my environment. So once I had written these files and if the Kramemco single density disk had not been defective in general this is what one would do one would split up the disk image file once one uh, expanded the compressed version and created a binary version of it so it would be the raw binary data on a single density 8 inch disk you have 256,526 bytes that's much too large to fit in a 64K RAM on a computer in order to transfer it to the disk so the image file then was split into five segments 000 to CFFF D000 to 19FFF 1A000 to 26FFF 27000 to 33FFF and 34000 to 3E8FF These binary file segments represent data on the original disk starting at track 0 to track 15 for the first track 16 to 31 track 32 to 47 track 48 to 63 and track 64 to 76 a total of 2002 sectors 128 bytes each 256,256 bytes need to be transferred and as I said the majority of this was useless to me because the disk directory was corrupt in the archive file so I could only really transfer this very first section track 0 and to track 1 I didn't even do anything more than that and then I put in my C BIOS and cold bootloader from the DJ board and I used the rwdj.com program to do that and I wrote it saved it to the 8 inch floppy and this is the result If I type DIR, we get a directory listing of the files that I have manually brought over one by one using the rwdj.com uh, program. And uh, 
brought them in by CPM using the save command, which we'll talk about later. A stat command can be issued, which shows how much space is left on this disk drive A, 18,000 bytes. A more detailed information would be stat A colon DSK colon, which shows more information about the file directory structure. 